So in this tutorial I'm going to make one slight improvement to the workflow for the trails tutorials that we covered earlier. And I'm also going to use that as an excuse to look at how to use ramp parameters in your parameter editor pane in Houdini. So I've got set up here a slightly simplified version of our trails. So I'm bringing in the moving points here and I'm creating a polygon based trail. Now in the earlier tutorials I used the point number to create an attribute which I called rank which varied along the length of the line. In fact there's an easier way to create an attribute like that which is to create some texture coordinates on the curves and the SOP that allows you to do this is UV texture. The difference between the UV texture SOP and the UV project SOP is that this contains some extra options in particular this one which we're going to use to project onto or to rather to assign some texture coordinates to our curves and these ones which allow you to assign texture coordinates to NURBS curves and this one which allows you to take the natural texture coordinates from a NURBS surface. So in this case I want to use rows and columns and I want to apply it to the points. And we can see the effect of that in the details view here. And we've got some U coordinates that vary along the length of the curve. And I can demonstrate that by hitting the D key to bring up the display options and then selecting UV chords so that we display them. And if I zoom in a bit here, we can see that the U coordinate is 0 at this end of the curve and 1 at this end of the curve. Now this particular option, rows and columns, works because we're dealing with polygon curves. If we convert them into NURBS curves and then add a UV texture, which again we're going to apply to the points, we can use one of these spline options to create our UV coordinates. So let's use uniform spline and again we have something that goes from 0 here to 1 at the other end. I also want to cover how to use ramp parameters in parameter editor panes here to vary attributes across the length of a curve for example. And indeed they can be used for any situation where you want to relate one term to another term using a profile curve. So let's repeat the scenario we had earlier on which was to create a width attribute which varies along the, the length of our line. So let's call this create width and the attribute is going to be called width. Now the parameters that we've got here are the ones that come naturally with this node. But we can in fact add any parameters at all to this interface using the edit parameter interface control up here. And those parameters are called spare parameters. And we can use them uh, to calculate the value of the parameters that are actually on the node, as we will see. So let me add a ramp float parameter, which is the spline based profile that we want. And I'm also going to add a float. The reason I'm adding a float is because the output of the spline or ramp here is between 0 and 1 and we may want to scale that. So let's call our ramp width profile width profile and we'll call our multiplier width mult width multiplier. And for this one I want to set a default value of 1 and I can do that here on the channels tab and I set the default value to 1. So let's accept that. 
what we've got here is our width profile ramp which we can manipulate in the usual way and a width multiplier. Now these are spare parameters so they don't have any effect on the action of this node unless we use them to calculate some of the values in these parameters which come with the node itself. And what we want to do is create a value here which relates the U coordinate that we've just created to this curve. And we can do that using the CH ramp parameter. CH ramp, as you can see, the first argument is the, is the ramp parameter. Then the position that we want to calculate on the ramp. And then finally, the component index. The component index applies when we have a color ramp and we need to extract either the red, green or blue component component index of which are 0, 1 or 2. Here we've only got a single float value coming out, so the component index is going to be 0. So let's select our width profile. The position we want to access is map u, and that's a variable which contains the U texture coordinate, and then we want the component 0. And we want to multiply it by the value of the multiplier, so we just need a channel function, and we need to get our width mult. So what this should do is ensure that our width varies with the length of the line. Now in fact uh, the U coordinate is 0 here and 1 at this end so we probably want to do something more like this. So let's have a look at this and see whether it's doing more or less what we expect. And it is. As you can see, the curves start with a small width here and a large width here, based on the profile which we've included in here.